Okay, so I've got my cookie dough that's been in the refrigerator overnight, wrapped in plastic wrap. I've got the cutter I'm gonna use. This one is round on one side, scallop on the other. It's a great set, it comes in all different sizes. I will attach the link at the end of this video if you're interested in it because I absolutely adore this. Then I've got a small bowl of all-purpose flour, my favorite rolling pin. I prefer a wooden rolling pin, but a lot of people like the marble ones because they're really heavy and the weight of that marble rolling pin will kind of weigh down your dough for you, but I feel like it's a little too heavy for sugar cookies. So I like the wooden rolling pin. And then I have two cookie sheets here and this is the pre-cut parchment sheets you can order. They're perfect for a cookie sheet size. If you are a baker and you do a lot of baking, even if it's not necessarily decorative cookies, anything that requires parchment, I would highly suggest you invest in these. One box will last you a really long time and it doesn't curl up at the ends, like the rolls of parchment that you buy at the grocery store. And generally you can fit about a dozen cookies per tray, depending on the size of the cookie, but this is your very, the very average size. I feel like a dozen will be perfect for each of these trays. I'm going to start by dusting my work surface with a little bit of flour. And if you don't have a stainless steel table or something that you're comfortable pressing your cookie cutter into, like if your friend's going to leave a mark on your countertop if it's granite or marble, you can buy the silicone mats that are meant for this. And I actually have a couple of them, but for these stainless steel tables, I don't worry about it. These are my work tables, so I don't care if they get a little scratched up. So I'm going to do that. Because you want a pretty good heavy amount because you don't want these to stick and they'll lose shape if you try to pull them off. Okay, so I've got this wrapped in plastic, so let me get this unwrapped. And my cookie dough is rather soft, so that is why I have to make it the day before and then let it chill in the refrigerator overnight. Now you could do as little as three hours, but I've done that times before in a rush and I don't think it holds up as well. So here's this. And so if you were to try to roll this out at room temperature, it'd be so soft it would just be sticking to your hands. So I'm going to roll this directly onto my surface, dusted with flour, and just start kneading it together until it becomes a little bit more manageable. And as you feel it sticking to the table, you can sweep some of your flour over and just keep folding it over on itself. Okay. I think that's pretty good. And I'm going to do another quick dusting. And move that around. Now, as far as how thick you roll this out, kind of up to you. I like mine, I would say medium thickness. They're not super thin, um, but they're not as thick as I've seen other people do. Get my sheet out of the way here. Okay. You can also buy rolling pins that have these little uh, rubber rings that stick on either side to ensure that your dough rolls out evenly. I never liked them. I don't know why, but they, I feel like they get in the dough and it just kind of annoys me. So I tend to just kind of eyeball it, but you can feel as you start to roll it if it's thicker in one place or another. You can usually tell by just running your hand across the surface. And I like to, on occasion, roll it, turn it, make sure there's still some flour underneath there. Same thing when I do pie dough, anything like that. Scones, you just really want to make sure it's not going to stick. Okay, I feel like that's about the thickness I want. And you'll be able to see a little bit better when I cut it out. So I'm going to use the scallop side. I'm going to start towards my edge and just press. And I jill it just a little bit. It's gonna, if it sticks in your, in your cutter, which is totally fine, just take your finger and gently push back and have it land in your other hand. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it is probably, you know what, let's measure it. Let's see how thick this is. This is right at, well, just barely over half an inch, just barely. So these will take about 10 minutes in a 325 degree oven, and that's actually a convection oven. So a convection bake, 325. You can easily do a 350 bake on a regular oven. Um, so it should take about eight to 10 minutes, depending on the size, but this thickness, that's probably what it's going to take. So you just lay it over here. And just keep going. And I feel like it's starting to stick a little bit. So I'll take it where I've got a little bit of flour sitting here and kind of run it through there to make sure it doesn't pull too hard on my sugar cookie dough. Now, so 
I've got, I've used pretty much all the usable space on this cookie dough. So I'm going to ball it back up, knead it again, pull in some flour here. And you want to work fairly quickly because you don't want this to get too soft. You want it to stay a little cool and the heat from your hands are going to continue to warm that up. That's why you want to knead it as the least amount possible. So re-roll it out as few times as possible. And so once you, that's why I like to get all my ingredients out. I like to get all my tools out, my cutters, everything. So I don't have to let it sit here while I'm getting everything together. Cause that's just more time for it to become soft. And obviously with each roll, it's going to get a little smaller. Okay. I feel like that's about right. And if you roll out too many, so for instance, the order that I'm actually making these for, she wants at least 12, but she said if I have enough dough to give her 24, that'd be fine. I told her 24 would probably be pushing it. So it looks like I'm going to get about maybe 18, so about a dozen and a half. But if you only needed 12, but you wouldn't want to throw the rest of this dough away, and the dough won't stay fresh forever. So what I would suggest is continuing to cut it out like I'm doing here and then bake it just like you would if you were going to go ahead and use them. But as soon as they cool, I think I can get one more. As soon as they cool, you would place them in a freezer size Ziploc bag and gently place them in there. Don't stack them, don't throw them. And then put them in your freezer. I wouldn't freeze them for a super long time, but you could definitely freeze them for up to four to six weeks and then pull them out about an hour, maybe not even that, before you're going to decorate them because they don't take very long to thaw and decorate them as normal and they're perfect. So don't ever waste that extra cookie dough. Even if you don't want it, you don't want to, you don't want to bake it and keep it around the house because you know that you'll eat it like me. And then you can always freeze it and use it for another occasion. So the next time you have guests over or your kids have friends over, you can pull those cookies out of the freezer. They're already baked. If you didn't want to decorate them, you wouldn't even have to. Just serve them as is. Okay. That's good. Do that. I'm going to really, really close to 24. This is going to be great. Oh, I might be able to do it. The little things in life make me happy. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get a little bit more flour. I only need two more, and I think I'll get there. That is fantastic. She'll be very happy. Okay. And another thing, if you have extra dough, like especially if you just have one or two extra cookies and you're like, that's not even worth breathing. It's such a small amount, cute little cookie treat. All right, so I got 12 on this tray. Got enough dough for maybe one more. I'm just gonna squeeze it in down here. Because what I like to do is I like to chill my dough again on these trays before I bake them. So, yes, I can definitely get that one more out there. It's always good to have one extra in case one breaks. Okay, so now that I have the 12 plus one on this tray, I'm going to put them in the refrigerator to chill for about 20 minutes before I put them in the oven. I'll let the oven preheat while these are chilling. Then I'm gonna bake them at 325 in my convection oven. I'm gonna rotate them halfway through. Rotate them like this on the rack, but also switch racks. So I'm gonna start with this one on top, the other one on the bottom, halfway through. I'm gonna spin it, but also move it to the bottom rack, if that makes any sense at all. I wanna rotate them as much as possible because the top rack will bake a little bit faster. In my oven, I don't know about everybody else's oven. My oven has like a hot spot towards the back, so that back cookie always needs a little bit more brown, so I definitely want to rotate that. And how do you know when they're done? You don't want them to be completely golden on top, because that means it's going to be really hard, because these have to sit out while you decorate them and dry overnight again. So they're going to be exposed to the air. You want these to be soft. So what I always do is I want the color to stay pretty pale, but you'll see, on the, especially on a cookie like this that has like these little scalloped edges, you'll see just a barely little tint of gold or tan on that edge, it's done. It is done. Take it out. So you take those out and then you're going to leave them on the tray for another 10 minutes so the bottoms get nice and done and firm. Then you can remove them from the cookie tray onto a cooling rack or onto whatever surface that you're going to decorate them. Because you can pretty much decorate these about 
20 minutes after they come out of the oven because they cool that fast. So I'm gonna pop these in the refrigerator, clean up my workspace, and I'll see you back here when they're ready for the oven. Okay, so I've got my oven preheated. They've been in there, actually it's about 25 minutes. I've got both trays here. So, as you can see, I've got one rack on the very bottom and one, a couple racks up. You never wanna put them towards the top or they get too close to the heat. So I've got one here. directly below it, and I'm going to set that timer for about five minutes, rotate them like I showed you before, and then cook another five, maybe six minutes. It really just kind of depends on the cookie shape. See you in five minutes. Okay, we're ready. So this is the five minute mark. So I'm gonna show you what they're gonna look like. See how they're still a little bit kind of wet looking on top, very doughy looking, that's what you want. They should look like that at the halfway point. So I'm going to switch racks, but also rotate. And you should be able to smell that doughy, buttery smell at this point. Okay, close back up. Let's do another five minutes. And then I may have to go an additional minute. We'll wait and see. We'll see you back in five. Okay, that marks another five minutes. So let's see. So once on top, they're really pretty and pale, but I don't see any gold or tan on the edges. Not yet. So I'm gonna put these back. And we're gonna do actually based off how they look. I'm gonna do two minutes. So that'll be 12 minutes total. And then we'll check them again in two minutes. All right, so that makes two more minutes, which puts us puts us at 12 total. All right, that looks a little bit better. So see how they're still really, really pale? But, I know it's hard for you all to see, but on this one, on the far edge, I can see a little bit of gold coming through. Let me check the, let me check the other tray too. Not a lot going on here. So you know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm going to switch racks again. And do another minute. So this is making a liar out of me. I said 10 minutes and we're already going to be at 13. That's why it pays to know what they should look like. Don't always assume 10 minutes they are done. Um, when I make Easter cookies, I always make a few different shapes and one of the shapes is a carrot. So it's kind of long and thin and it always bakes at 8 to 10 minutes because it's kind of narrow. So anything that has like a small edge to it or really frail kind of fancy border, like anything that's like super lacy or thin at the end, like a lot of animal shapes that have long or tall ears or long tails, those little tails or ears will get done first. Um, so you never want to put those on the same tray as like a bigger, fatter cookie that you know is going to take longer to bake because you won't be able to take these off and put the other ones back in without breaking the cookie. So always make sure that the cookies that you put together on one tray are similar in thickness and in overall size. They don't have to be the exact same shape, but similar in size. So for instance, with these rounds, I could have done a plaque shape or a square or a triangle um, or a Christmas tree would have been fine, but nothing super narrow. Okay. okay, this is perfect. So this bottom tray is now done. There's one, two, three, four, five. I can see a little bit of gold on, on the edges. And I'll zoom in later so you can get a picture of that. So I'm going to take those out and check this top one. This one needs about 30 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk this tray back to my cooling rack. By the time I come back, this one should be ready to pop out. Okay, so I give them another minute and now I can see some gold on the edges. So I think that I am good to go for both trays. So I'm going to turn my oven off. Turn the oven light off and then I'm going to wait about 20 minutes before I decorate these. You can also let these cool and sit overnight if you're not going to decorate them the same day. So for instance, if I wasn't going to decorate these tonight, I would still let them cool about 20 to 30 minutes, then place them in a Ziploc bag or a Tupperware container with, a, with an airtight lid on it, just in a cool, dry place overnight. The next day, take them out, get them lined back up on cookie sheets just because that makes it easier to maneuver between cookies when you're decorating and start decorating immediately. Um, I like to flood my cookies to the background color 
the day they're baked and let them sit overnight and then come back the next day and add my finishing decorations. So that's probably what I'm going to do. But I hope this helps you out doing any kind of rolled out cookie, even if it's not this exact recipe. It kind of shows you the different thicknesses and baking times and temperatures that can help. You can also do shortbread cookies as a roll out cookie dough. It is gonna make a much more crumbly, buttery texture. It's not gonna be super soft like this. I do a lot of shortbread on the holidays. Um, I don't fully decorate them like I do the sugar cookies. I normally dip them in chocolate or something of that nature with maybe some sprinkles, but it's really good and it's really good with coffee. Here's the finished product for the cookies. I hope this video really helped you out. And if you need more information, you can also check out my other YouTube videos on this channel. You can also check out my website, thesweetshopbybeth.com. And if you're interested in help with your own cake cookie business, please message me or comment below, and I'll send you all the info.